Hey guys, this is Jim WT1W and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today I want to talk about crimping. We have a whole variety of connectors we can take a quick look at, as well as some insulated and non-insulated style connectors, spade lugs, fork lugs, ring terminals, butt connectors, ferrules, all of the above. And with it I want to demonstrate a tool I found. This is a universal crimping device. One of these can take care of all of this and you don't need to buy expensive single purpose crimpers. All you need is a good pair of channel lock pliers. Stick with me. All right, guys, so obviously just kidding with the uh, one crimper to rule them all. Here's an assortment of crimpers that I have here in my toolbox and I might have a problem uh, with crimpers. So let's kind of go around and, and look at what the different kinds are. Some of these are kind of specialized. Actually, I'd have to say that every one of them is specialized because it's designed to crimp basically one thing. Now, one important thing that you can do if you plan ahead and are willing to spend the money up front is a lot of these crimpers, these are standard size dies that go in the crimpers and it just depends on what brand of crimper you get, but then you can just replace the dies. So you can unscrew this and pop out whatever size die is in there and replace it with a different size die. Some of these are interchangeable with each other, some are not. Mine are kind of mix and match. And mine are all specific because I bought it when I needed it. I bought, you know, not the most expensive one and certainly not the cheapest one. So mine all tend to be just different and that's what I roll with. So what we've got here, some of these are very specialized. This is a RJ45 crimper and this is designed to make network cables, gives you the color layout on the thing, and you can do uh, through connectors, both the network cable size, RJ45, and then something like an RJ11, which is your standard telephone line size. And it's designed to cut, trim, crimp network cables. This guy, pretty obviously, is designed to crimp coax, and it depends on the kind of coax and the kind of connectors you got. So obviously this is for larger coax. And then depending on what you're doing, some of the coax has ferrules on it and you use this to crimp those specific ferrules. This one is, this is a power pole crimper. Gives you the different sizes of standard ham related power poles here. 15 amp, 30 amp, 45 amp and you put the connector in with the wire and then give it a good squeeze and it's done. And most of these are ratchet style crimpers which tends to be what I, what I favor. This guy is a crimper for the little metal inserts that go in JST style connectors and in DuPont connectors. So that's what this thing is designed for and I think it even says on it somewhere the sizes and of course that's the size of the wire that goes in that guy. This is another coax crimper, coax style crimper for smaller size coax ferrules. All right and I think I've done a video on ferrules before and we're going to look at some crimp connectors and I'll show you what a ferrule looks like and amazingly enough I don't have my ferrule crimper laying up here because I meant to grab it. Yep there it is. Missed one. So this is designed to crimp standard wire gauge ferrules. The crimp piece goes in the center, you squeeze it, and it makes an excellent physical connection. This is a crimper for insulated terminals, your standard red, blue, and yellow terminals. We'll talk more about those in a minute because that's really kind of the point of the video. But this is for insulated connectors, not non-insulated connectors. And there is a difference. This guy is your standard tool belt, one that you have in your in your your dad's toolbox or whatever. And this is designed to crimp insulated and non-insulated crimps, as well as a wire stripper and a wire grabber on the end. This is kind of a really nice multi-tool. This one in particular is not expensive. This is a cheap one. Uh, wire cutters for different gauges. So you can clip, do this with electrical wire, so on and so forth. And then down here on the bottom, you can see 
that we have two different kinds of things. So we have some specific auto size crimps here. And then this is for insulated only terminals. And these are for insulated and non-insulated and we'll get to the difference in a minute. But basically on an insulated terminal, you have the plastic insulation around it and you're squeezing the plastic insulation as well as the ferrule in, that's built inside the thing. And with a non-insulated when you don't have the plastic, so there's this little dimple that you put the back side of the connector to and the front side where it's split over in a U-shape goes here in the smooth curve. And when you squeeze this together, not ratcheting on this one, then it crimps it and makes a good physical connection. All right, so that is a sample of crimpers. Okay, so here's a sample of some of the different kinds of connectors. These are the most common ones that you're gonna see around your house, uh, used in your car, or for electrical, electronic projects. And let's talk about what each one of them are. The first one we have is a ring terminal. Pretty obvious why it's called a ring terminal. This is designed to go over a bolt or a, a screw and have a nut down on top of it. And of course, since it's a solid connection, it can't be pulled off easily at all. Most of these styles of connectors have, and I don't know if this is going to focus in the camera or not, where you can actually see it. There it is. And you can see it right there above my wedding ring, 16 to 14. So it will tell you the gauge of the wire that this is designed for. And there's a fair standard among these, these connectors here. Uh, red is the smallest wire. Typically, let's see if it's even marked on this guy where we can read it. Yeah, there it is, you can barely see it. 22 to 16 gauge for red. Then our blue one should be probably 16 to 18, I think. 12 to 16 gauge. And then the yellow one is gonna be uh, typically 10 to 12. And it's not marked on that particular one. They all come made for specific sizes of wire. So it's important, whatever project you're using these things on, that you have the right size connector for the wire you're using. So, ring terminal. This is called a fork terminal, right? And this is designed to go around a screw or bolt and be fastened down again with a nut. There are some instances where this is easier to use than a ring terminal because you don't have to unscrew things to slide this in there, just loosen up a nut, slide it in and connect it up and you're done. The other thing that you'll see uh, differences in, besides the wire difference, and I'm not going to open this package, but these are all ring terminals and these are made, and it's marked on the package, 12 to 10 gauge wire, is the size of the openings in, some, in all of these. And I have not been able to exactly see a standard for that. You just kind of kind of eyeball them. Um, I have some ring terminals that are not yellow, they're like a beige color, with a much bigger ring internally than that one. So for example, on this one, you can see here that the ring on the blue one is a lot smaller than the ring on the yellow ones. And of course, that's gonna determine the size of your bolt that you're connecting this to or screw. This is called a spade connector. And the reason it's called a spade connector, ha, <laughs> oh, pulled off the insulation, is that it's a two-piece connector. It has the flat end here, and that's designed to go into this end, the female part, and they connect up like that. This one's typically called a bullet connector or a quick connect. And so you can see inside there, this is designed for this piece here to go in there and make the connection. Then you're gonna crimp your wire here and here, and then this is designed to pull apart. Again, a different, different kind of disconnect available connector, similar to this one because you can disconnect them but a different style completely. And we used something similar to these in the uh, Mercury Link dipole that we did for Coffee and Ham Radios. And we sell those all those antennas on coffeeandhamradios.com and I'll have a link in the description below for those. These style connectors were used in, for example, our Poseidon antenna and our Apollo antenna. So, and I think probably Aries as well, I don't remember specifically, we used ring terminals. But, you know, it just depends on what you want to use. There's, there's, either one will work as long as you have good metal contact. This is called a butt connector or a splice connector. 
and this is designed for you to marry two open-ended wires together. Each wire goes in part way and then you crimp it and then you have an electrical, a physical electrical connection. I tend to not like these because you can't add any solder to help strengthen the connection and you can't really see what you're doing inside of them to know if your wires are in well enough on both ends that you end up with a good mechanical connection after the crimp, but they make them and people use them. This is called a ferrule. Now this is a large one here, obviously. So this is gonna be made for a large gauge wire. And if we take the ferrule box on the front of the ferrule box, it specifically says what gauge wire can be used for each of the different colors. And then this, this assortment that I have here, focus camera, is designed to have all the way from eight gauge wire, which is some big honking wire, all the way down to something like 22 gauge, all right? So what you do with these is the same kind of thing. You push the wire in. Now the difference is on these, and let me get a sample wire. The difference is on these, let me back up. This is what these are typically should be used for, is these kind of terminals. So instead of shoving a wire in there, you crimp the ferrule on the end of the wire and you put the solid ferrule inside that and screw it down. So it should be used for these kind of screw terminal situations because it provides a better connection. Assuming you have the right size, this is obviously not the right size for this. But that's the kind of thing that this is designed for. And the way these work, similar to all the rest of them, is you put the wire up inside it, like so, and then you use the specialized crimper that I showed you earlier, and this is to crimp ferrules, and you come in here like this, and this is the wrong size wire for this ferrule and you crimp it and then you can see that it crimps it on four sides and gives you a nice square connection and then that's designed to go like I said into these screw type terminals and probably some other uses as well that's what I use them for now it's critical and you can see here that this is a terrible connection because you can see the wire floating around loose in there so this probably well, bit a little better I think some of that's because of insulation but you really want the right size terminal. This wire is uh, probably 16 gauge and that's not designed for this big yellow connector. But that's what these are used for. So that's called a ferrule or ferrule, F-E-R-R-U-L-E. -E. You say it however you want because I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. So these are the most common connectors that we're gonna see in ham radio, this, this motley assortment of, of connectors. Now these are all insulated connectors and they crimp differently than non-insulated connectors. So with a crimper like this guy, this is made specifically for insulated connectors. So let's say we want to crimp this end on this wire here and we want to use this ring terminal and that should be pretty close to the right size. I'm going to put the wire in. I usually give it a little twist. I like to leave a little bit of the wire sticking out you don't want it where the wire is up in the middle of the ring and you also don't want it where you have exposed wire you want to cover it up with the insulation then you take your crimpers you put it in the crimper and i double check after i've got it captured in the crimper that i got my wire where i want it exactly give it a squeeze and now we have a very good mechanical connection that's not coming apart, right? Now I typically do like to solder, so I'll come back with this and I'll heat this up and, and flow some solder into there just to add a little more mechanical strength to that kind of connection. The last thing I wanted to mention, since we talked about insulated connectors, which is what these are, a non-insulated connector is a little different. And let's see if I can make this a non-insulated connector. Okay, I just made a non-insulated connector. As far as I know, if you buy them non-insulated, they look exactly like this anyway. The difference is this now doesn't have the plastic on it. So if you're gonna use a connector like this, for example, we're gonna put this on this wire, and this is uh, trimmed back way too much. The wire still goes in there the same kind of way. There we go. Now, obviously that is way too much wire sticking out of that guy so I'm gonna grab my side cutters and trim that back 
and I still have a little too much wire because I see silver sticking out down at the bottom and I still need to trim that just a little more. So now that is a non-insulated connection right there. All right. And you want to try and get all your wire inside the terminal. So there we go. All right. So the thing that I really want to share, and this is a common mistake, is these crimpers are not designed to crimp this terminal now. They really will not squeeze enough to put those, to, to squeeze that together and make a good mechanical connection. These are designed to have the extra insulation around it, and that's what that portal in each of the sizes there is designed for. So when you have a non-insulated terminal that you're crimping, you need to use a crimper that's designed for non-insulated terminals. All right, so what we're going to use here is the non-insulated side, and we're going to use the bottom set here where it says non-insulated 22 to 18. And the way I learned to do this, you see you have the little opening there, the little slot where they rolled the metal around, and then the back side is solid. So what we want to do is we want to put this in our crimpers so that that dimple is on the flat side and the open part is down here on the smooth end like so. I got to kind of hold the wire it'll fall out. So you can see our dimple side and then the back side. So the back side is where the dimples at and then the split is on the smooth round part and then when we crimp this And of course, these are non-ratcheting, so these are a little more of a pain in the butt. I might do two crimps. And then that thing has bit the wire really well. It's nice and even. It's got a great divot in the back. And that is not coming off. So that is the difference between insulated crimps and non-insulated crimps. And for doing non-insulated terminals, or if you made them non-insulated like I just did, you've got to use this side because the fancy ones will not crimp down without the insulation around it. Guys, I was kidding in the opening of the video if you didn't figure that out about using channel locks to crimp with. You can. I probably grew up doing things like that. Uh, I also have seen people use um, regular standard size wire cutters, not little tiny ones like this, but more the size that are made for cutting household electrical wire like your 10 or your 12 gauge wire to make the crimps and, and do it. <laughs> Don't do this because you're probably not going to get a good crimp. And the beauty of the crimpers, and this is the, the, the sexy part of this whole thing, is the way these are designed, even this cheap pair, is these are designed to put force equally all around the connector, around the wire, and compress that connector in on the wire, and it makes a huge difference, and it makes strong mechanical connections. And I know people that swear by crimping only. I generally, if I've got time, am gonna, like I said, put a little drop of solder in there just to increase the mechanical connection and enhance the electrical connectivity of it. Fellas, that's all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed this. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It's the little button down below. Ring the bell. It's right next to the subscribe button. And that way you'll get notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks, y'all. 73. Have a great one.